Anthony, I was trained in science. I have a doctorate in brain science and have studied philosophy of religion and indeed have wondered about the reality of a, of, of a god. Um, when I wrestle with these things, I, I am told that it's okay to have science and religion in two completely separate buckets, and each one can help inform me. And if I have a, a truth of a left eye and a truth of a right eye, I can have binocular vision of the world. How's my vision? <laughs> I think that argument that uh, you can build a, a wall between religious belief and scientific practice and outlook is... is uh, um, um, if I'm going to be controversial about this, I think it's a dishonest argument in a way, uh, because what it invites people to do is to apply different criteria to the, the kind of thinking they apply in these two different ways. One thing which is crucial to science is that thought and investigation should be deeply responsible, that you should look at the evidence, that you should go with the reason, that you don't have preconceived ideas about where you're going to arrive at, and that the ethics of rationality demand of you that you accept uh, the, the, the argument if it's really convincing. It also, of course, uh, demands of you that you recognize that all our human endeavors are defeasible, we might be wrong, and that if other evidence comes along which is better or different, that you change your mind. So it's, it's, a, it's a demand uh, of you to um, respect facts, respect objectivity, and go with the evidence and what the Well, that's the highest ideal of the scientific uh, approach that is rarely followed. I mean, all the scientists I know have their own theories, and for 30 years they, they pound it, and you know, sometimes they're willing to admit it. And that's certainly the ideal. Religion claims, if not a, a, the same ideal, a similar ideal. Well, I, I was going to say in that, in that connection that uh, in, in the case of uh, your ordinary religious uh, believer, your member of a church or a synagogue or a mosque or a temple, is asked by the religion to be um, a believer, to have faith, to accept the principal doctrines, mm -hmm. and to question them, and again, historically, we see overwhelming evidence for this, is regarded by the, the, the belief system as threatening to its survival. So people are not to question, they're to believe, they're to accept. Islam means submission. The great sin mm -hmm. in Christianity is pride, that is thinking you can stand on your own feet. I think I disagree with you uh, uh, about science for, for this reason, that even though individual scientists might become wedded to crazy ideas about the efficacy of vitamin C or whatever it might be, <laughs> nevertheless, science itself as an enterprise has this powerfully self-correcting sure, sure. character to sure. it. And that uh, all the eccentricities and vagaries of individual scientists do come out in the wash because mm -hmm. of this process, this mm -hmm. thing which is mm -hmm. the scientific method. Mm -hmm. And th that's really rather different. Whatever theologians may think, and however much doubt an archbishop might have about the principles of faith, he doesn't want his flock to have them. And this is a contrast. This, the idea of, of faith versus the uh, open-ended, defeasible, um, I have to go with the, with the objective facts demand that science makes. The argument is, and I've thought this myself, that if religion has the um, assumption that if it's real, not some sociology, but if it's real, that there's an antecedent in reality, some transcendent thing beyond the physical, then is it consistent to demand of that the same kind of repeatability experiment that we know in science if religion itself is not physical in terms of its ultimate reality? So I, I struggle with the, the internal consistency of applying the scientific argument to things that are, by their own claim, non-physical. Well, it may very well be that, that uh, um, the religious lobby could argue that scientific approaches and scientific tests, the test tube approach, is not applicable to religion because it deals with a kind of reality and a kind of experience which is very different. But I don't think that that exonerates uh, religion from other kinds of scrutiny. The scrutiny, for example, of reason, of comparative religious sure, study, sure, sure. Uh, of, uh, um, you know, the... Uh, robustness of the religious belief to certain sorts of hard questioning. But the, the, there is the Popper point. Uh, Karl Popper once said, uh, and it's a simple but a very important insight, I think, here, that something that explains everything, something which is robust to all skepticism and all tests, in the end explains nothing. That if something is going to have a real bite as a theory, um, you've got to know where it will break down. You've got to know what 
test uh, would 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 fail it. Falsify it. And exactly right. And in the case of religion, it's very hard to see what would do that. It's also very hard to see why we should accept the the standard get out clause of, of every religious apologist, which is, all right, let's set up an experiment. Let's test God. Let's pray for um, you know, a rainbow to appear in this room now. If it doesn't happen, then there's this be some evidence to the fact that there isn't one. We say God will not be tested. And that's a sort of get out clause. And it's very difficult to know what really would count as a, a, a test. If somebody seriously and sincerely wanted to try to test the robustness of a religious outlook. Yeah, the problem is is that it's an internally consistent system which has no relationship to its uh, truth value a- at all because the claim is made unless you feel it yourself. I mean, my many friends who are believers who are first-rate scientists, I'm really first-rate scientists, claim that they see the scientific world, uh, generally it's in physics and cosmology as opposed to biology, which is its own interesting sociology. Uh, but they claim that they feel that the physical world is completely consistent with their religious belief, but they cannot prove the legitimacy of their religious belief from the physical world. But because they have this internal feeling that they're sure there's a God, which they tell me unless I have, I can't understand, which I haven't had and I don't understand, uh, but, but then they can interpret, they can see the world consistent with their religious belief. And, and they tell me that if they saw it inconsistent, they would change their belief, but they don't. Yeah, you, I think, put your finger on it there, the internal feeling, the feeling that comes from within, the Mm non-rational, the emotional or or sentimental configuration, absorbed uh, by individuals, usually early in life, from the surrounding society, where a tremendous amount of value is placed on religious orthodoxy or, or observance, where our reflex is to say of somebody that they have a religious belief, that they are therefore a good and trustworthy person, and somebody who doesn't, that they're the opposite. Whereas if you flip things round uh, 180 degrees there, you might say somebody who has a crazy belief about invisible beings who perform (laughs) magic tricks, that they can't possibly be trustworthy. I know you must have good friends who have PhDs in physics and mathematics and cosmology who are believers. Uh, Maybe they come see you by night, not during the day, but... How do you how do you understand these are really smart people you know however smart you think you are they're they're the equivalent <laughs> well uh, it's an interesting fact uh, but I suppose just a sociological one that there are the fewer of those in uh, the United Kingdom than there are in the United States I think but that's not a trivial point because it does reflect the importance of background culture and how that influences um, people overall I certainly have uh, people I greatly admire who are um, ecclesiastics uh, for example got quite often debated with and, and uh, talked with uh, Rowan Williams who's the Archbishop sure. of Canterbury and others um, and uh, I do find myself puzzled sometimes um, about how in their private moments when they uh, are feeling a little detached from their commitments, how they square things to themselves. It's it's very interesting. Uh, and when you push them on it and you, you ask them how they manage it, they will say that uh, they rely on these very deep inner convictions that they feel. An appeal once again to the emotional wellsprings of, of belief. And I think that um, you know having a faith is something that for many people does satisfy a, a need, a need which is commonplace among us. We are seekers of, of, after answers. Um, we, we do need a sense of structure and purpose. And the old philosophical question, what's the meaning of life, is uh, answered in bucket loads by, by religions. When I'm asked that question by cab drivers, I say I know the answer to the question of the meaning of life. It doesn't have anything to do with religion. (laughs) And the answer is the meaning of life is what each individual person makes it from his or her own talents for doing so. So so what does it mean ultimately to have science and religion as these two eyes to give you a 3D binocular vision so you can see the world as it really is? I don't know uh, personally whether it is genuinely sustainable for somebody to think uh, in in this very divided way about reality overall. I I wonder how stable that is psychologically for somebody to to, to try to live through these two very different conceptual commitments. Some people do try by saying they're incommensurable, they can't be compared to one another, they're very different. Different magisteria uh, has has been sometimes put. But I'm I'm afraid I think that, that 
religion and science address themselves to the same domain, same range of phenomena. They're about how things started, where they all come from, what they all mean, um, how the universe is constituted, what it contains. Uh, and as science has advanced and lifted uh, our uh, horizon of unknowing more and more, so as we see in the developed countries of most of the West, as we see, for example, in Europe, uh, religious belief has less and less of a hold on more and more people.